Hello, this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. I wanted to create one more card with these iridescent papers and I wanted to use these jungle themed ones today. I didn't want to use too many uh, because I want to give uh, as many away as possible. If you haven't seen my giveaway video, um, I'm going to link to that below. Unfortunately, this time it's only going to be a UK giveaway. Having said that, I've read a few comments already people who are as far as Australia. So I think I will have another giveaway uh, sometime soon that in um, goes worldwide. So I don't leave out any of the subscribers that are not in the UK. So what I was looking for for a card is that really, really highlights these lovely papers. And Sam Calcott posted today, obviously it won't be the day when I'm posting this video, but she posted today another scrap video where she uses some of her stash and creates um, loads of different cards. And one of these cards, I've seen it before, I've never made one before, and I thought this would be perfect to highlight these papers. And it's a never ending card that you can flip into various directions. So I basically just watched her video again. I'm actually still right in the middle of it because I need to um, write down the measurements for this cardstock. But I have created the base. Um, but apart from these two papers, these iridescent papers, I'm going to mix this, just to save a bit of the lovely papers as well, with um, some foiled leopard print. This is from this um, paper pad, which I also got at Action, where I got these from, but I bought this last year, if not the year before. So have a look through your stash. Also, I was reminded recently, I did a video um, where I made um, three wild cards, I called them wild birthday cards, um, because one of the recent magazines had got, I think it was a creative stamping magazine, had got wild, um, wild jungle themes in them. So have a look what you've got. Um, mix and match paper pads as long as they go together somehow. And I just picked these two. Um, uh, there were quite a few of these leopards in there in different settings, sort of um, somewhere just sitting, I think. And I quite like, quite like this sort of theme. And this is why I thought this goes well with this. And this is why I went with an orange card base. This is a 225 GSM. I wasn't quite sure what um, thickness uh, Sam uses in her video. But I think she said at the end she uses a little cardstock. And I think that's 220 GSM. So I just went with this. So for this card, what you need is... You need four pieces that are three inches by six inches. And you need to score these all these pieces at one and a half and four and a half on the long piece here. And then you need to um, turn the piece round and score it again from the other side because all the pieces need to be scored and burnished on both sides. So that's what I've already done here. I scored them at one and a half and four and a half, turned it round, did the same again, so and then burnished these. So these are really flexible because that's what you need for the mechanism. Then let me just move this out of the way so I can move this up a little bit. So on two of these cards, I have marked the middle here, just on the top bit and the bottom flap here, and the same here, um, just with pencil. Um, because you need to put some glue on these outer corners. Also make sure, Sam said, but that worked fine for me, that when you put these next to each other, that the score lines are in the same place. Sometimes with the scoreboards, they're not quite in the same place, and then you just have to turn it round. So scat uh, Sam, she used um, some adhesive tape, but I think I'm going to use the quick grab glue to or even no, I tell you what I use the collar glue because you have to align the other pieces and I think it'll be easier if I use the collar because then you've got a bit of wiggle room so what you need to do is you put glue onto this square here make sure you don't go over the middle line being quite generous so, and then you take one of the other pieces and you sit this across. So these are 
vertical, these are horizontal. And you basically align this on the corner. So it might be easier to just lift this up, and this is why I'm using the collal. And you make sure we can always turn it around as well. It's aligned here absolutely straight on the corner. I'm just pressing this down. Also, as I said, make sure you don't have any glue there. I can actually still see my line. I might have to erase that afterwards. But I'm pressing this down like this, and that should be fine. So now I'm putting glue on this corner here. And again, I'm aligning this corner, making sure everything is straight. Don't worry about this bit in the middle if it overlaps. Some had that as well. I can remedy that in a moment. I'm just turning it around, making sure it's aligned here as well. And again, I have to move it a little bit. The corners need to be correct. So now I need to put glue on these two corners and again I'm doing this first this corner putting this one on and then this corner but I'm going to speed the video up for that. Okay, I'm leaving this to dry now before I cut off anything that overlaps and catches here. So in the meantime, I will cut my uh, patterned cardstock. Okay, my base cut had time to dry and you can see it catches here and it catches a bit on the other side. So all I'm going to do now is to cut a slither off. So I just open the card. I'm just seeing which one I'm cutting on. I think I might start with this one. So I'm just putting this in my trimmer. I'll actually put it this way around because then it, it will lay, lay flat. If I lay, have it the other way around, that will lift it up a bit. So and as I said, just a slither. And then I'm testing it again. Yeah, I think I will do a bit on the other side as well. Again, turning it around. I'm not quite sure I might have to actually just done this side. No, it's this one I think I need to cut. Yeah, that's fine now. It's actually a bit open, but it doesn't matter. So and I'm going to do the same here on this side. So you can actually see where it caught there. Just a sliver there, and I'm doing a slither on the other side. It's quite confusing to be honest to see where I've done it and where not. It might be an idea just to mark it with a pencil so you don't get confused like I have just been. So let me just get this out of the way so I can lower this a bit. So I think this is how it works. Yep, and then you open it like this. And can you open it like this? Yes, you can. There we go. And that's the whole mechanism. Caught a little bit here. So I might have to cut it off a little bit there. If you ever got problems cutting it down like I have, make sure you have pressed this down properly. Sometimes that makes such a big difference. Difference. So I think I'm doing the same on the other side. So, as I said, it's the first card of this kind I'm making. So. I've got no experience with this, but it is straightforward once you follow the instructions. So we open it like this. Yeah, there we go. So I'm pleased with this now. So I have written down all the measurements from Sam's video. 
and let me zoom in a little bit for this. So for the patterned cardstock, you need different sized pieces. So for the first, basically the, the topper when you have the card, how it starts off, you've got four pieces that are two and three quarters by one and three quarters. Sorry, one, one and one quarter. So you need four of these. If you have directional pattern, the final view of the card has got this paper going up. So it would be one and one quarter by two and three quarters. That's why I wrote four here and four. So you can't see that now. Let me zoom out a little bit and four here. If you don't have directional pattern, like I will use the um, leopard print, then you can simply cut eight of these and you don't need to bother about these that have label D. Then you need eight squares that are two and three quarters by two and three quarters. They are for the bigger panels. And I have decided here, these panels here, they are the ones here on the inside. Some Calcutt in her video, she had two panels there, but I'm happy to just have one panel on either side here that then peeps through here. And you need them here as well. And then you need eight little squares that are one and one quarter by one and one quarter. So I think the bigger panel, I will choose the the leopards themselves because I don't want them to get lost. Imagine if you try to cut out small um, squares or rectangles that would go missing. So I'm having the bigger pieces out of this. And let me just think, I need eight of these. I might actually, just having a think. Yes, I will have four of these, so the, the what I labelled size B, I will have four of these, four of these, and then my um, A and D will be the leopard print, and I think I'll find a print that would work with the really small quarters, uh, sorry, um, small um, squares. But I'll have a look whether I use this paper or whether I have something else because these are really tiny and I don't want to waste any paper. I'll have a quick look through my stash and I'm just cutting them all to size and then I'll come back and show you how to glue them on. Okay, so I've started sticking these down. Um, I do regret a bit not paying attention to how I cut these here because I tried to get um, these animals in without cutting um, through heads really so but on second thoughts if you um, have a motif like this and have animals it might be worth cutting it from one panel so have it um, I can't even figure it out but anyway have a bigger panel and then just cut it in half so when you stick it back down you basically got a continuous pattern which I don't have I think I get away with it here but ideally you wouldn't have that um, it's a bit easier when you've got a pattern like this, it doesn't really matter, but I think here you can notice it a bit. So, as you've seen here before, pick, put down the two squares here and then the rectangles here. And then you open this up and you've got the two rectangles here. And this time I actually had the two pieces being continuous. Um, but I did, again here, I did pay attention to how I cut this, so I made sure I had the full leaf here and I didn't want to cut these flowers off too much, so I played around a bit with the cardstock. And then these little um, um, squares go in the corner here. Nothing goes down here, because for that you just need to open it up again. And by the way, I found it useful just to put my ruler here in the middle, just to hold this down a little bit. So now I need to glue on the little squares here and then I'm going to have my other two leopards here. It doesn't really matter. Again, I think I wouldn't have this one facing that way because you're expecting this leopard to be continued. So I'll put it the other way around and I think then I get away with this. So I'm gluing this down um, and then let me just open up the last bit. Yeah, here again, it's straightforward again. So I've got two on top of each other. Again, I'm checking which way around these are. Again, I think I've cut a slither off there, but because I've got the gap, it doesn't really matter. So that goes there. 
and then I've got the rectangles there. So I'm going to glue these down now and then I'll show you the finished card and how the mechanism works. Okay, my card is finished and I think it looks really, really cool with these papers. The lovely iridescent papers. So you open it like this and then this opens like this and then this opens like this. And I added a sentiment here. I don't know how easy it is to read that. I had actually planned to stamp or heat emboss in white, but I didn't read the label on my little box. So I heat embossed it actually in clear. And this is the other one. It's, but I quite like the look of it. But then I had a thought. I just used the excess on my white blending brush and just went over this. And then used a cloth to wipe it off the heat embossing again. And then I've got this look here. Um, it is sort of subtle at the same time, but you can still read it very well. And this stamp, by the way, have a wild birthday, is from this stamp set by Sam Calcott, which came with a magazine. And I hadn't used it before, so I thought this would be perfect for this. But I didn't want a bold sentiment, just a little something so the recipient knows this is the inside of the card. And then obviously you can open it again like this. I did, by the way, have to cut off another slither at one point. So make sure your mechanism works really nicely all the way around so that you can actually fold it backwards again as well. Mine was catching at one point. So yeah, if you like this card, you might want to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, I post videos two to three times a week. You might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video.